Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio, this is the Agenda Podcast for Thursday the 14th of March. The Agenda, an alternative commentary collective podcast. Good morning, Lane. Um, we lied yesterday on the podcast. There was no net session. We ended up going to the pub instead. It was always going to happen, and I told you I wasn't prepared to have a net session. I saved my body for sacrificial... Uh, like a sacrificial lamb for actual game day, which yes. is tomorrow. Yep. And we're just about to get in the car and head to Tauranga. I packed the bags. I, yes. got the, I got all the gear. We're going to pick up the caravan just yes. shortly, and then we need to drive the caravan from Auckland to Tauranga. Over which, the Kaimais. Which leaves us with a sort of uh, Gandalf prospect of either going through the mines of Moria or up over the mountains. And um, where Saruman at the moment is casting a rain spell. Oh, yeah. So we've got to decide whether to go over the Kaimais or through the Karangahake Gorge. And so... I might go the K-hole. You're going to go the K-hole? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It's going it's, to... It's, I've almost died in that gorge a couple of times. Uh, one of them was when we were driving through at night. It must have been about like 10 o'clock at night. My missus was driving and a cockroach crawled out of the door, the frame of the door and onto the window, the driver's side door yeah. window beside her. And I was just like, if she sees this thing, we both die. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to say to her, hey, can you please pull over? She's like, why? I was like, I can't tell you. I cannot tell you, or we're both going to die, but you have to pull over. <laughs> She's like, okay. But then there's nowhere to pull over. Finally find a place to pull over. Like, go, 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 go. <laughs> she turns around, she's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the closest I've ever come to death in that uh, gorge up until today, when uh, yeah. we take the rickety old caravan uh, yep. through that gorge. Well, the thing is with the caravan, there's nothing much to it. So, no. I mean... It could disintegrate and we'll just still carry on, wouldn't know. <laughs> we, we drove it back from Tauranga after the black clash with the window open in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> It's pretty hearty. It can get through a lot. Hey, uh, later on in this podcast, we're going to catch up with Joey Wheeler. He's yep. uh, covering the commentary in the missionary position for Sky. Yep. Uh, he was over there at Super Round and uh, it'd be good to catch up with him about what's going on with the Landers, the Crusaders, um, basically Super Rugby uh, as a whole because it has been a lot better this year. So we will get into that. But first, I really wanted to address this with you, Lane. Yeah. Uh, National Rugby League news. This has been bandied about um, quite a bit, but it's now sort of starting to take shape. A rival contender for a mooted South, I love that word, mooted, South Island franchise in the NRL has emerged, headed by former New Zealand rugby and NRL chief David Moffat. North Canterbury-based Moffat wants the South Island Kia to play out of Christchurch's new Takaha Stadium and is targeting a 2028 debut when the NRL is tipped to expand to 18 teams. Do you like the name, the South Island Kia? I probably need something a bit more aggressive. I mean, Kia's, yeah. More fearsome. Yeah. Having said that, the last franchise that they introduced were the Dolphins. True. Which is also not a fearsome animal. I would say that the Kia is my favourite native animal. Does it have to be alive? Could you call it a Tanifa? Well, yes, the, the Tani Five was something I was thinking of. I also, I really wanted them to be called the Canterbury Panther. Yeah, Canterbury Panthers. But yeah, or maybe like the Haast Eagle. <laughs> the Haast Eagle, yeah. <clears throat> um, but always the Seagulls, isn't it? That'd be confusing. Well, and Penrith Panthers, yeah. yeah. So oh, maybe okay. the Fiordland Moose, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I, the, <clears throat> I'm going to have to be honest here. The only thing I like about this is they get to play in Takaha Stadium. Yeah. Uh, I'm not in. I'm not for a South Island team. I'm sorry. Why? I think there's enough space and enough population. <clears throat> For a second Auckland team. What do we got? One and a half million people in Auckland? I think it's like 1.8. Yeah. So I know, sorry, South Island brothers and sisters, mm. but a team in Christchurch would get 5,000 each week. No, and no. And die in the no, ass. No, no, oh, no. after the first year. No, I will. No, no. It will. I You're guarantee wrong. you. No, nah. uh, no, you just got to look at the Crusaders games. They're packed out every week. They've always been Are packed they? out. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's rugby. Yeah. They're, they're, they're sports mad down there in uh, no. Crusaders land. I think you've got an unfair uh, a bias against South Islanders. I don't know what it is, um, but all North Islanders have this. They just hate the South Island. They don't want to see it succeed, except for uh, our dear friend David Moffat. Uh, he, if successful, the care would also include a women's franchise competing in the NRLW, and a handful of home matches will be played at other South Island venues. This part's exciting. So they would play a game or two at Forsyth Bar Stadium. I presume they'd play one at Alpine Energy Stadium in Timaru. Of course. Uh, perhaps they'd go down to Southland, you know, um, spread it around a little bit. They'd have to play one in Queenstown, for sure. 
Um, that would be pretty exciting. But I think you'll like this part. They're proposing a cooperative model that would allow fans to invest and own a portion of the franchise. That's good. I quite like that. Yeah. That's quite good because I mean, if you invested five grand, you're going to go to every game. You're invested. You're like, oh, I've got to go. I own, I I own I, the I South Island care. I don't, I don't mind that part of it. I was being a bit facetious about the <laughs> Auckland one, by the way. I was just winding up South Island. <laughs> um, but saying that, if you come from Penrith, not Penrith, maybe a Sydney uh, franchise and you play an away game in Invercargill yeah they'll well, be like motherfucker massive massive home advantage the problem that they're going to have is the same problem that the Warriors have and that's if you your options are you can live on Bondi Beach and play for the Roosters or you could live in Hornby and play for the South Island Care like shout out to Hornby I'm probably going to Bondi <laughs> yeah true and you can't really entice them over with hey we'll give you a season's pass to Mount Hutt to Cadrona. You, yeah. you can't do that because they can't do any of that. Sorry, the, the bike park's closed because of the fires. But other than that... Well, you can't do anything extreme. You, <laughs> your family yeah. can. Your family can have fun. You're going to get You're gonna get full punishment. Yeah, not a lot of scares over there. But <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really think... I think that's going to be a big uh, hindrance to it. I don't like whenever they talk about a second NRL franchise in New Zealand. They always say it'll be good for the game. It'll grow the game. And we'll have more rugby league players. That's not true because in 1995 they started a team that you may know as the One New Zealand Warriors, and that has not drastically changed the complexion of of the national rug, you know, of rugby league in New Zealand, has it? I guess it's given more interest and more. I mean, I'm aware of more Kiwi players when Did, they play. Yes. Uh, like before, when the Kiwis would play, I had no idea, no idea, no idea. Yep, no idea. But now I pretty much know all of them. Yeah, but and back in the day, half of the Kiwis team played over in England, whereas yes. now they all play in the NRL. But the thing is, most of them don't play for the Warriors. I think there was like two Warriors in the yeah. last Kiwis team. So I don't buy the uh, that train of thought that it's like, oh, it's going to grow the game, there'll be more players, because those players get siphoned off. There's heaps of players uh, that grew up in Canterbury. Uh, Jordan Ricky, who plays for the Broncos, uh, he, he grew up in Hornby. He played for the Hornby, I think they're the Hornby Panthers. Um, you know, there's all these different players. They don't end up staying with the national franchises, so I don't think that's going to work. And then you're going to have this franchise that's really struggling to bring players over. That's yeah. the only problem I have with it. I think they've got a Papua New Guinean franchise that's looking like they're, it's... They're talking about it, quite yeah. quite politically <clears throat> motivated, that one, um, we talk, I, I gather. We talked about this last year on the podcast, and there was some sort of ramifications where China was trying to get their yeah. talents into Papua New Guinea. Yeah. And that... Um, Negotiation with and, the government was, we'll give you an NRL team. Yeah, that's right. If you, if you, if you kick the Chinese out... <laughs> if they, you stop them, let them building ports and naval bases yeah. and air force bases, we'll give you an NRL we'll team. give you an NRL franchise. So that could be pretty exciting. Uh, the NRL is planning to add an 18th men's franchise by 2028 because at the moment there's 17, which is just a ridiculous yeah. number to have. Uh, with two further teams to be added in two years, uh, in 2030 when it's likely that the competition will be split into two 10-team conferences ahead of the final series, which I quite like. Yeah. Make it a little bit clean, a little bit more um, understandable. Yeah. You know, you can kind of wrap your head around it. But I, I think that's pretty exciting news when these things start to come to fruition. Uh, and awesome that when they've got that new stadium, Takaha, you've got to use that. It looks it, pretty good. Yeah. If I mean, if the Crusaders are there, the South Island Kia <clears throat> uh, are there, um, the Killer Kias. They, they need to make the Killer Kias or something. Kias, but what is the most, I mean, what... What is the most fearsome animal that we have in New Zealand? Uh, uh, Frisian bull? Is there Adesanya? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's not really any. The South Island Adesanyas? N- nah. There are definitely uh, no South Island No, nah, well, I mean, the only thing that can kill you really is a, a catapult. A spider. Yeah, the spider. That's I mean, plenty of things can Island. kill you in terms of cattle beast and, well, glaciers. and whatnot and dogs and glaciers and, yeah. Riptides. Avalanches. Riptides? Riptides. Uh, yeah, Maybe. Christchurch Quakers? Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't know about that. It's just, you're right, and there needs to be some sort of fear. The liquefactions? Yeah, the, the, liqui- the leaky homes. I don't know, the Paul homes. There's, <laughs> it needs to be, there needs to be an investigation into what we call it. I, I like the Kia as an animal, but again, it's not going to... Um, it's a bit cheeky and a bit too funzy for me. It's smart. It's a clever animal. Yeah. It'll rip the rubber off every part of your fucking car. If you leave your car parked yeah. anywhere where there are Kia, it'll pull your wing mirrors off. It'll... We went on a school camp and everyone's shoes were getting nicked by a Kia out the front. We were in Arthur's Pass. If you lift your shoes outside, a Kia would just grab it. You just never see it again. Yeah. Just take it up into the into the bush. Um, today, probably by the time you're listening to this, they will have announced it, but they announced the shortlist for the new Auckland FC team. Oh, yeah. The shortlist of names. Yep. Black Knights FC. Yep. FC Auckland. Yep. AFC Black Knights. Auckland FC. Auckland Black Knights. Auckland Volcanoes. 
I think um, it's going to be Black Knights. I, I don't. I know. I, I don't. I think it's going to be like Auckland FC, um, which I love because you can make that Auckland fucking cunts. Um, Fair cunts. Uh, AFC. I think it's going to be AFC Auckland Football Club. I, and then I think the, colloquially the, known the as nickname is Black Knights. It's like okay. the Red Devils. You know, um, Liverpool. They're known yeah. as the Red Devils. Oh, Manchester United. Which uh, one's the Red Devils? Manchester. Really showing our lack of football <coughs> knowledge here. It's a blind spot for me. Hey, but I'm uh, I'm because it's a blind spot. I'm all in. I'm all in on the Auckland Football Club. I'm oh, all yeah. in on the Black Knights. Um, I do. I I spent five years in the UK, and people ask me what football team I followed, and I was like, the Fulham. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Reading. Yeah. Uh, my parents lived in Reading, so I said Reading. And they're like, oh, they're going well this year. I had no idea. <laughs> so I feel it's my my duty as a middle aged white man to <laughs> to to a football uh, team. To, to align myself to a football team. So I am balls deep in the Auckland FC. Okay. Uh, Black Knights. Um, I'm into it. Um, I'm, I'm going to struggle to get out to Mount Smart, to be honest. Everyone does. But I'm into it. Yep, same here. I'll go along for one game. Okay. I, I, I hope they have good merch. Black Knights opens itself up for a great range of merch. Yeah. I'd like a helmet. Yes. Yeah, Please. <laughs> also, I mean, if, uh, hopefully they hand out Black Knight licorice as well. So we've got uh, the Knights and the Warriors at Mount Smart Stadium. Yeah. That's going to be it's gonna be very interesting. There could be some good scraps out there. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one. We're going to take one quick break, and we, we will be back with yours, please. Yours, please. Brought to you by Leader, home of the lasagna topper. A lot of pocket dials starting to come through for this. A lot of pocket dials. Um, really? Just, yeah, th- just breathers? There was one yesterday that was clearly on a building site, and you could just hear banging in the background. You sure it wasn't someone actually banging? If it was, they need to get seriously looked at because <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal there were about 15 guys involved oh yeah okay so yeah <laughs> so but yeah um check check your phone because we've had i think we've had like four in the last week of just pocket dials people in cars people in i don't know how you don't notice like if you're connected to a bluetooth device and you then i have to press it a couple of times yeah i don't know anyway this wasn't a pocket dial yours please morning fearless it's your old mate david bain with an e here uh, just chiming in, so last night I was looking at the Super Rugby table and I've come to a sudden realisation that we're now operating with 12 Super Rugby teams again, which means we can crack out the old logo and just start calling it Super 12 again. I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on it? I think, I think, thank you very much David Bain with an A, Super mm-hmm. 12 was, uh, I don't even think it's arguable, that was the golden era of yep. Super Rugby. it was. And... The jerseys now are selling for three hundred dollars a pop. If yeah. you've got one of those old school jerseys, the Highlanders one with the like weird pattern on the front of it, Crusaders ones, they're massively unfitting, like big cotton. Tents, big yeah, they're cotton tents. As soon as it rains, you're ten kilos heavier. Yeah. Um, I reckon we should. We they've really missed the trick here with the twelve teams, yeah. not just running their entire campaign on like a throwback Super Twelve thing. Yeah. I th- think that's a that's a brilliant idea there from David Bain with an E. Um, I'm just going to call it Super Twelve for the rest of this year. Yeah. What uh, are, what are, what are they calling it? Super Super Rugby Pacific. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nah, Super Twelve. Um, another one here. Listen to yours, please. Hey, fellas, just been trying to figure out why the Black Caps lost that last game, and I think I can blame it fair and squarely on Gene Lane. Oh. Um, what? There was no ultra pre-game planned for the uh. whole test so what the hell's going on guys okay i think he i think that uh yours please contacted me earlier about that oh, really? uh, listen there's just only so i mean so many beers we can buff um but we apologies for that next season we will aim to do a uh, ultra pre-games uh but hey look saying that we did an ultra pre-game in wellington and we still got humped mm-hmm. so i don't know if that pre-game would have helped might have mm-hmm. helped you emotionally but i'm not sure it would have helped the performance of the team I guess we'll yeah. never know. Yeah. Um, and just one more here. Call of yours, please. Captain Arsegrab here. If the Warriors lose to the Storm this weekend, are we hitting panic buttons? Is it still our year? Is it still our year? Is it still our year? Will it still be our year? Huh? Gee, Captain Arsegrab was getting into that. I hate to think what he was actually doing there <laughs> grabbing his own ass um yeah i think it's still our year if the warriors but this is we're only two games into the season you know no one goes undefeated throughout a season yeah i, mean, I can recall last season wasn't a great start either no and uh, then we rattled we did rattle off like a five game winning streak and yeah. that's when it really sort of um ripped and i think one of the things that we're contending with this year is 
finishing top four and going so well last year, people are circling us on their calendars. They yeah. don't want to lose to the Warriors. The other thing is, we've only played one fucking game. So can everyone just chill out a little bit? All right. And we lost. Classic it. Warriors fan. Can we, we just chill out, okay? We lost it by four points. It's just one game, okay? It's just one game, even if we lost two. You don't get in bonus points for finishing close, though, do you? No, you don't. Nah. It's not like Super Rugby. It's like you either no. win or you lose. Yeah, that's right. Um, but confusingly, when there's a buy round, that's two points. I don't understand that. Um, for the longest time, they used to joke that the Warriors shouldn't even get a point for the buy round because they <laughs> wouldn't have won that. But things are different now. Um, and I will be commentating the first ever Warriors victory this Saturday night. It's uh, 9 o'clock against the Melbourne Storm. Who are we, who's doing it with you? I don't know. Oh, do, probably do, me. Are you free? Yeah, because I'm... Cause I'm commentating the uh, Chiefs Drua game before that so right. I might as well just roll straight into some wires you might as well stick yeah. around yep um, everyone else is away for various different reasons um, so I'm looking forward to that one but I think like yeah the Melbourne Storm are going to be a, a tall order they're going to be tough to beat but I do think we're a better team than them and again it's only one game I have never seen the trophy handed out in round two so let's everyone just relax a little bit <laughs> I think I think so, so many casual fans who don't really follow the Warriors saw all of the hype last year, and this is such a Kiwi thing. Then all of a sudden they lose ga- one game, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're not so good now, are you? Well, oh, that, what happened? Exactly. Well, so I'm not going to win every fucking game. That's like the 2015 Cricket World Cup. Yeah. Where were the rest of the 38,000 people that came along to that pool game against Australia at Eden Park? Where were they? Yeah. At in summer, where were they? Gone. Yeah, gone. They're off the bandwagon. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well. All right, let's take one more quick break, and then after the break, we're going to talk to our dear friend, Joey Wheeler. Well, it was our great pleasure this morning, Lane, to welcome into the show for the very first time, uh, Joey Wheeler. Good morning, Joey. Whereabouts in the country are you, mate? I'm in the beautiful Dunedin, mate. Um, lovely, balmy, nine-degree morning down here. Just lovely, you know, March. We've already hit winter, so, uh, <laughs> no, it's good. Good, down in Dallas, dirty old Dallas. Ah, oh, beautiful. Hey, um, Joey, look, we're, we're going we're to talk some super rugby. We're going to go balls deep in some code. Um, is this potentially the best start to super rugby in terms of results, in terms of action that you've seen for quite some time? Oh, yeah, I, I think so, mate, just because it's so competitive. Um, like, you look back uh, to super round and how tightly contested all those games were, bar probably the Chiefs versus Brumbies game, um, which I, I think surprised all, all the punters. Um, and then it's continued last round with, you know, some upsets that, you know, no one really saw coming. The Rebels beating Moana Pacifica at home in front of a dire crowd in Hamilton. Um, the Drua doing the same against the, uh, the Crusaders. How good was that? Oh, um, love it. And, and then um, the Brumbies just just scraping home against the force and the Reds getting it done against the Chiefs. So I think from a fan perspective, from an engagement perspective and a quality of, of rugby, it's um, I think it surprised everyone because the Aussie teams are a lot more competitive than they have been. And that's a great thing for this competition um, and a great thing for Australian rugby. Eddie Jones is probably sitting counting his yen in Japan, Tokyo at the moment, saying, this is all part of the plan, mate. <laughs> this is part of the plan, mate. Yeah. Trust me. You know, the Aussie teams are going to win the competition in 2024. <laughs> and you blokes guess me. You know, that's... That's a it's good. That's a, that's a good Eddie. Yeah. That's a good Eddie you yeah. got there. Well, you know, I, I had a bit of an experience with Eddie because I had five years up at Suntory in Japan. Oh Jesus! And and he um, he used to coach coach there, so he consults a little bit to them. So he'd come in for a couple of weeks. What's your best? Just, what's your best? What's your best Eddie what story? You got any got any um, crackers? Yeah, I do actually. Um, George Smith was. I was playing with George and Matt Gatto were our two. Um, sort of big dogs, and we were playing shitty old Honda, uh, the Honda Heat, as they called. And I think we were we were about thirty odd points up at half time. And for us, that wasn't you know wasn't good enough, really. And he came in to the sheds, and um, George was uh, two seat. Uh, there was a, a bloke in between us. The number six was in between us. George was playing seven, and Eddie just came in and tore strips of George Smith, the great George Smith, said, mate, you're carrying like a fucking pussy. I need you to fucking carry through these blokes. They're fucking shit scared of you, and you're not doing what I need from you, George. So I need more. Then in the second half, George scored two tries, set up three, um, and he was like, 
shivering, uh, shaking like a little schoolboy, like terrified of the headmaster. He just has this aura about him, especially around those sort of um, those players of that that era, like um, Matt. They said when he walked, when he used to come in for these two weeks, they still had that bit of fear about him, even though these guys are world class, played over a hundred tests for their countries. He still had this sort of, um, I guess. Uh, spell over them, I guess, probably like maybe Shag Hanson has over a few of those um, experienced All Blacks. So, but no, um, a, a, a real intense bloke, like crazy rugby brain. But um, yeah, a, a, a really funny story that um, at half time just rinsing George <laughs> Smith, even though I thought he was actually playing all right. You know, so you didn't stick up for him, just go, hey, uh, hey, uh, Joe Wheeler, Targo, um, uh, Eddie. <laughs> You just lay off him for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Right. stay in your corner, mate. Like, <laughs> leave my mate alone. Leave my mate alone. You chirpy yeah, little no, dingo. No, no, no chance, but no <laughs> chance. I was just sticking to my own zone. Yeah, yeah this, this, suck back a couple more power aids. Yes, yeah, yeah. there's all sorts of stories about him bringing samurai swords into the changing room and cut, cutting kiwi fruits in half and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's out the gate on Eddie Jones. Uh, you mentioned the Super Round. It was the first round of Super Rugby. You were over there in Melbourne, weren't you? What was it like over there? Oh, mate, awesome! I, like, I love that event. Like it's um, that they do it really well. It's awesome having all the teams in one place. It's just a shame. Like I just don't think Melbourne is the right city to to host it. Um, mm. They're just so AFL centric. Um, uh, but the concept's great. It's just they don't they don't follow rugby. Like you go around when you when you're over there and you, you go into a cafe and they're like, "Where are you from? New Zealand? Oh yeah, what are you doing over here? I'm here for the footy. I have the footy. Footy. Footy doesn't start till next week, mate. <laughs> like, oh no, the rugby. The rugby. Rugby. What's that? You know, like no one's got a clue. It's crazy. Um, eh? So yeah, like in terms of the event, it's it's awesome. It's just it just doesn't quite um, get the cut through in terms of the the crowd and building that atmosphere. Although the Saturday was um, a reasonable crowd and they were right into their work. Um, you know, like the, the Aussies, as as you blokes well know, they love a schooner or two or, or 17 and they were they were right into it in the crowd, which um, made for some eventful sights um, around the ground. But well, I'd love to see it. I think somewhere like um, Perth would be um, unbelievable for that event, um, just because I think a big expat community over there who really love their rugby and would get right in behind it. And Perth don't, don't get many events, and I think if they had something like Super Round there on their calendar, it would be a really well-followed event and, and well sought after um, because I think they, they gathered a bit of fanfare around the, the Sevens a few weeks back as well, yeah. which was um, which was a hell of an event. So oh, that would be my pick, either there or, um, or Sydney, obviously. I think that those are the two that I think they need to look at, but I'd love to see them carry on the concept, but I know that the Victorian government pump a lot of money in behind it to get all the teams there, so oh, right. the issue will be getting someone to do the same sort of thing. Well, we had a listener submit a uh, message to us last week saying, why don't they move Super Round to Queenstown? Because all Aussies would love to go to Queenstown, and wouldn't that be a hell of a spectacle, an advert for the country? Oh, mate, <laughs> it would be phenomenal in the basin, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, he was take over Queenstown. Uh, look, there's enough Aussies there as it is, but yeah, a weekend, <laughs> a weekend in Queenstown. Yeah, I wouldn't be complaining, um, and especially that time of year, it'll be it'll be conditioned wise, it'll be beautiful. It's just probably squeezing the three games, or the two games in in the right time time slots because I don't think any of those grounds have got lights over there that would be able to sort of. Um, to, to host them, but man, Queenstown would be an, an epic venue, wouldn't it? Um, and easy for the Aussie fans to get over. You're right. Yeah, and but, but I mean, surely there's at least one park there out. Sort of, is it Frankton Way? We could all just park our cars around the outside if we left the lights on. <laughs> Full high beam. Full high beam. Yeah, right. on the dark ball. Hey, uh, Joey. Um, I get sidetracked by Super Round here, but I, yeah, my right. my highlight of, of Super Round is actually when they um would pan to the the commentary box. And yeah. I think it was you, is it Justin Harrison absolutely gullivering <laughs> Timmy Horn? He looked like a he looked like a young school kid in between you two monsters. And yeah, like, they I should think have... it was Jeff McTainch, was it? Was it little Jeff McTainch? Oh yes. yeah, 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 Jeff McTainch. Poor poor Jeff. Yeah, I think I even mentioned. I said, "Geez, this is a gullivan moment, isn't it?" Far out. Yeah, this was they, sh- they put you right at the front as well, so you looked about three meters tall. You looked like Ga- you you were Gandalf. Uh, and- 
<laughs> it, was, it was good. That, that was my. I mean, the rugby was great. Trust. I mean, don't get me wrong, but that, it's so awkward that thing when they're like, you get it in your ears. Hey, lads, you're coming up to the uh, commentary cam. You're like, what the hell do you want to shoot up here? And you're sort of looking at the camera, looking at the ground. What, what's going on? You know, like, where do I look? It's kind of awkward. You're talking to each other. Yeah, really, really strange scenario. What you should do though, if you want to put them off, is when they go, we're going to come to you boys. You guys just strip down, strip full naked. <laughs> And then they cut to you and they'll be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Just full homoerotic and then... The new, <laughs> they're fucking full... What the fuck is going on up there? <laughs> That's why they don't or have just, a camera on us. Or just walk back into shop yeah. full stark. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. yeah. Or just taking a piss in the rubbish bin in the corner or something. <laughs> just really lower the tone. Um, yeah, I, don't, I like it. I don't want to get too bogged down in actual rugby union, fellas, but um, my beloved Crusaders, uh, well, they've lost every game that they've played in Super Rugby this year. I, I'd like to say that the the um, Fiji one was a bit of a scheduling loss. They won, they lost that one last year as well. It's a bit of a bogey team for them. Um, but Joey, do you think that these the, the Crusaders are in deep shit at this stage of the season, or is it too early to say? <laughs> Everyone bar you is happy, I think, now, <laughs> uh, around the country. Oh look, um, yeah, no, I, I think they'll always come right. They've just got too too classy a squad not to come right. Um, although. The task doesn't get any easier this weekend for them against an unbeaten Hurricane side who are playing some white hot footy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, the draw um, in Fiji. I, I, I genuinely think those guys are going to be um, in, in the next year or so. They, they will be right up there at the pointy end of the competition. Like they've got that that talented as squad. Um, the the issue for them is is touring. They're still not. Understanding like the professional side of the game, how how to um, prepare as professionals, they're still learning that side of it. Yeah. And once they get that right, holy shit, they are going to be dangerous. Yeah. Um, because we just know their athletes that they've got that they can get right, and they've sorted out their set piece. It's been functioning pretty well. Um, but man, over there, what a place to have to try and go and win. Um, so so tough, but. Yeah. Yeah, look, the Crusaders, I think they'll come right, although their injury ward is um, looking pretty dire. And, I mean, geez, I'd, I'd hate to be Rob Penny at the moment. Um, someone texted me the other day a stat. They reckon he is 7 out of 33 games as a Super Rugby coach or something. Oof. Oh, Something ouch. out the gate like that. Ouch. Um, yeah, like it's... Um, yeah, it, it, it stings at the moment for, for poor old Rob. So... Yeah, he'll be wanting to get um, get one across the line. Yeah, seven from thirty three as a as a head coach at Super Rugby, Rob Penny. So um, yeah, I'm not, and I'm not sure whether they're going to do it this weekend against the against the Canes. Like I said, because man, they're playing some awesome footy at the moment. Yeah, they are. Scott Barrett out as well. It's, uh, it's dismal stuff, and I'm copying it from every angle. I'm getting chirps <laughs> yeah. everywhere I go. I walk around going, Rob Penny, not many. <laughs> Rob Penny, not many. <laughs> Uh, your beloved Highlanders, though, Joey, they're playing the uh, the Brumbies, who are looking pretty good this year. Uh, but I, I think in their own right, the Landers have looked a lot better this year. What do you put that down to? Oh, look, I think um, uh, a few things. Like, I think Clark obviously went away and, um, and and looked at what they did last year and where they might have gone wrong. And I think they focused a lot um, internally around um, their culture and making sure that they get that right first. And... They obviously lost a lot of talent in the likes of Shannon Frizzell, um, Aaron Smith. You know, like, they are replaced more in terms of what they do on the field, but they've got what they've replaced that with is a lot of youth, and with youth brings a lot of excitement. And um, I think they had a really, really good preseason where all that um, youthful, um, I guess, enthusiasm probably rubbed off on a few of those experienced guys. And mm. I think what you're saying is a team kind of like the Highlanders of, of old, um, which is gritty. They probably um, don't have as talented squad, but they're, they're gritty. They're not going to go away. They're going to hang in games. And then they've also recruited really well in a couple of key positions, one being um, the fullback, uh, Jacob Ratavaitavuka Netkins. Mm. I think that would have to go down at the moment as one of the um, recruits of the season. Like mm. The Highlanders, since, Ben Smith um, finished up um, in 2000 and I think it was 19. They've been searching for a um, for a 15, and 
you know, no one's really cemented themselves in the 15 jersey. And now I think I've found a guy that gets the balance right and, um, you know, plays a similar style to probably Ben Smith and has the, um, now with Ben Smith being part of the coaching team, has the ability to um, ask questions of Ben Smith every day and, and learn from, from the Oracle. So um, I think him alongside um, Timothy Tavatava Nawai as well, two, two outside backs have really um, steeled up the Hollanders and, you know, they're, they're sort of looking like they can break teams open because probably last year, they they had a good forward pack and they were winning penalties set piece time, but they just couldn't convert any of that pressure because they just didn't have any real game breakers in their back line. Mm. Um, so they've recruited really well in those two um, respects and also um, the youth bringing a, a lot of fizz um, to the group. So, yeah, they're going to be... I don't, I don't know whether... I, th- I think they'll make the top eight, um, but, you know, they're, they're, if they can keep that group together for the next few years, I think they'll be, um, they'll be a tough beat. Yeah, I... Um I know he's injured at the moment, but one of my favourite players for the Highlanders at the moment is uh, John O'Prior on steroids, Hugh Renton. Um, he has had, uh, he's had, he actually had an outstanding season last year as well. Um, and he started the season pretty bad, unfortunately he's got injured. I'm, we're, we're backing him maybe to put on the black jersey in the next couple of years. He's an animal, that guy. Huge, cool, that. Good. I like it though. Um, yeah, real tough edge. Um, he's, he's had a, an interesting sort of ride to um, where he is now was a schoolboy superstar, was in the Hurricanes from a young age and then just played with injuries through his um, early 20s and then sort of came down here the last three years and, um, yeah, I think probably his game kind of suits the way the Landers played. Yeah. Um, a tough edge, yeah. loves that physical confrontation yeah. and, and loves to lead that aspect of the game. And I think you're right, his game probably is um, suited to the test match level. Um, and I think with the size that he's put on, um, he wouldn't look out of place in the eight jersey. Um, but man, there's some there's yeah. some good eights rolling around at the moment with mm, yeah. Tutu and uh, Cullen Grace and the like. So yeah, plenty of competition there. Yeah, totally. Jo- Joey, we won't take up too much more of your time. What uh, what games are you covering this weekend? I've got the Landers Brumbies on uh, Saturday afternoon, which will be nice. Four thirty kickoff. So um, oh, beautiful. Um, you be, that's a that's a great. I love afternoon footy, but that's good that you're in the missionary position on that four thirty because we're not covering that game. Uh, we're in the reverse cowgirl for the seven o'clock game. <laughs> Seven o'clock reverse cowgirl, probably a little bit early for that, isn't it? Ah, oh, no, I'm never too early for reverse cowgirl, but we're yeah, we're right. on we're on from seven uh, o'clock on Sky Sport Nine. Where do you go? Where do you go at eight o'clock? Like, where do you go for, to from reverse cowgirl? Yeah, we go straight, full, straight in the door. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep. Straight to sleep. <laughs> oh, uh, champion, thanks, Joey. Thanks for joining us, mate. Um, good luck this weekend. Good on you, fellas. See you, boy. Well, that'll do us for today's Thursday edition of the Agenda Podcast. Huge shout-out to Joey Wheeler for joining us to talk all things Super Rugby. You can watch every match uh, from Round 4 of Super Rugby Pacific this weekend live on Sky Sport and stream on Sky Sport. Now Sky Open will have free-to-air live coverage of the Force vs Moana Pacifica game from 11.55pm on Friday. Jesus Christ. Uh, And then we'll be commentating uh, the Friday and Saturday 7pm games, so join us then. We will be back tomorrow for a Friday edition live from the Tradies 11, uh, Dulux Tradies 11 down at the Bay Oval in Tauranga, and we'll see you then. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. For more episodes, subscribe on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.